The explosive opening to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order quickly establishes important elements of the game. It introduces the world, the basic mechanics of traversal and combat, the crew the player will be traveling with, the antagonist, and of course, the protagonist, Cal Kestis. But in between exciting scenes of action, one brief quiet moment stands out. A dream sequence in which Cal is following his friend, Prof, on a train. Prof, wait up. Cal turns to find himself suddenly in the hallway of a Star Destroyer, where he's confronted by his former master, Jaro Paul. Apprentice, mark well and listen. Master. Trust only in the Force. This vision is the player's first indication that Cal is being haunted by something. The kind of traumatic event that's often buried deep in a particular element of character design. Backstory. So today I want to examine the overall design of the game's central protagonist, Cal Kestis. To demonstrate how his backstory is used to recontextualize the game's tutorials and create a game-long mystery and explore how the game takes one of the most important events in the Star Wars saga and uses it to build the foundation of Cal's character arc. Welcome to Storybook, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. When we spoke to Aaron Contreras, the narrative lead on Jedi Fallen Order, he described the game as the story of Cal Kestis, a Padawan who survived the Purge who then kind of picks himself back up a few years later and goes on to complete his training, go through a hero's journey, and, and go on this quest to rebuild the Jedi Order. And the game tries to ask the question of the player and of the audience, you know, what does it mean to be a Jedi now that the Jedi are fallen? When we first meet Cal, he's been in hiding for 10 years. In order to evade Imperial Inquisitors, he has partially closed himself off to the Force. His character arc in the game is all about allowing himself to once again fully open up to the Force. But there's something holding him back. Every time I open myself up, I see Master T'Pol. This implied traumatic event in his backstory is the reason Cal is so afraid of reconnecting to the Force. In story terms, this type of event is sometimes called the character's ghost. In his book, The Anatomy of Story, John Truby defines a character's ghost as an event from the past that still haunts the hero in the present. The ghost is an open wound that is often the source of the hero's psychological and moral weakness. You can also think of this as the hero's internal opponent. It is the great fear that is holding him back from action. The hero's desire drives him forward, his ghost holds him back. But while many stories establish the character's ghost right away, Jedi Fallen Order chooses to turn it into a mystery. The details surrounding what happened to Cal are slowly revealed throughout the game, and as we've already discussed, they are first hinted at in the opening sequence. This mystery deepens when the player next sees Jaro T'Pol during the game's tutorials. Try again. It's difficult, Master. At certain points in Jedi Fallen Order, Cal can only traverse an area by recalling an ability triggering a tutorial for the player. Good, Padawan. But instead of simply telling players which buttons to press, the narrative team uses these tutorials as opportunities to explore Cal's backstory. You're gonna acquire certain abilities at certain locations to move through certain physical gates in the game world. And then kind of fell on narrative to contextualize that and make it fit into his hero's journey in the story. Each time Cal recalls an ability, the player flashes back to a training session between Cal and his former Jedi Master. These flashbacks allow us to experience some of Jaro T'Pol's teachings. With persistence and the Force as your ally, you will overcome any obstacle. As well as the close friendship he had with Cal. Perhaps I chose the wrong pattern. Master? I'm only joking, Cal. By juxtaposing these positive memories of Jaro T'Pol with the intense vision Cal experienced in the opening, the game keeps the player intrigued by continuing to develop the mystery around the protagonist's ghost. What would Jaro T'Pol say? You have no right to mention his name. I wonder, what would he think if he could see his Padawan now? Why is Cal so haunted by this former relationship with his Jedi Master? The player receives the answer during the final flashback. 
Once the player is several hours into the game, the tutorial sections become familiar. So when this flashback doesn't begin in the training room, a first for these tutorials, the game is signaling that something about this one is different. Cal roams the halls on his way to training, giving the player a chance to interact with his friends, the clone troopers, along the way. You're in a rush. Master T'Pol's called me for training. You got this, kid. As the training session begins, it feels like a normal, if more challenging, training session. But when Cal reaches Jaro T'Pol, something isn't right. You must... <sighs> Master, are you okay? Something is... No, no. I don't want to. Something terrible is happening. The clones have betrayed us. We need to get off this ship. Quickly. Get to the escape pods. Go! As Cal begins his escape, we realize we are no longer playing a simple tutorial. We are experiencing firsthand one of the most consequential moments in Star Wars history and also the most crucial moment of Cal's backstory, the origin of his ghost. That whole sequence is probably the heart of the game. I think the power of video games and interactivity is that you become young Cal in that moment, and that really allows a certain different experience through it for you to sort of feel like it's happening to you, and it makes it very personal. Immediately following the Order 66 sequence, the player experiences another vision of Jaro to Paul. But now we understand why Cal is so terrified by his image. Padawan. It is time for instruction. Because he's overwhelmed by the guilt of not being able to save his master's life, Cal's emotional ghost has manifested into the literal ghost of Jaro T'Pol. Your fear cost me my life. And by literalizing this narrative device, the writers create a unique gameplay opportunity. I would have survived had you not been so weak. As the player must battle the embodiment of the protagonist's inner turmoil. Yes. My blood is on your hands, apprentice. You are a failure, a weakling, a traitor. You are no Jedi! No! And the player, just like Cal, must learn that this ghost cannot be defeated through pure aggression. Discovering the fear that has been holding Cal back is only part of the journey. Overcoming it will be a whole new challenge. I saw him, Master T'Pol. I, I saw the day he died. I saw what I did. Now it's destroyed. I couldn't save him. We will always struggle. But that is the test. It's the choice to keep fighting that makes us who we are. I guess it's about time I find out who I am. <laughs> Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is a great example of how to use a character's backstory to create an ongoing mystery that keeps the player curious. It demonstrates how a necessary game mechanic, like a tutorial, can be used for a strong narrative purpose. And it allows us to experience one of the most important moments in Star Wars history from an intimate, character-based perspective. Preparing us for the thrilling finale of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Hey guys, Michael here. Hope you enjoyed our video on Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. If you want to listen to the full conversation with Aaron Contreras, you can on our podcast, Beyond the Screenplay. The link to that episode is in the description below. Since Story Mode is a brand new channel, we could really use your help getting it off the ground so that we can keep making these videos. We want to use Patreon to grow a thoughtful and respectful community around Story Mode. When you support the channel on Patreon, you get access to the Story Mode Discord, where we're chatting with people about the games that we're all playing, as well as discussing some ideas for upcoming videos. 
We'd also really appreciate it if you subscribed to the channel, liked this video, and shared it with anyone you think might find it interesting. Any support you can give is greatly appreciated, and we have some fun ideas for videos that are coming up that I think you guys are really going to like. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, and always remember, the cake is a lie.